What's going on? Tonight, I am just chilling. I just thought I could uh, just sort of work on a question while just, you know, drawing. So, um, oh, that's cool. I didn't know I could do that. Oh, it's like a box. But no, I don't want that. I'm going to remove that. I think I'll use blue. Why not? So, it's been a day. Today's a Friday. I spent the majority of today just going through trees, like the fundamentals of it, right? Like traversing, pre-order, in-order, post-order, and then sort of doing like an in-order and reverse, blah, blah, blah. Then doing like a, you know, implementing a BFS or a DFS in iteratively and recursively. So just going through a lot of the fundamental blocks of trees, which is really neat. So I thought I could take it a step further and just, you know, just play with different questions for fun. So this question is called route. My gosh. Route between nodes. And given a directed graph, so let's create a, a directed graph. Let's call this A. A is going to point to B. B is going to point to C. C is going to point to um, D. <laughs> Get more creative. Uh, let's say B points to Z. Right? Let's say, you know, screw it. A also points to Y say um c points to e now this is getting messy now uh but let's say let's do one more let's say s is a node and z and e point at it this is quite a wacky node uh but the question says um if we have two nodes s and e design an algorithm to find out whether there is a route from s to e so in this case, we don't, S, S does not point to E, right? So we can just ignore that. Um, so S does not point to E. Um, but let's say, let's say that it did, right? Let's get rid of that. Let's say S did point to E. Okay, so we have a graph here and this graph can be symbolized as this right so we'll write down all the letters c d e um, s y z and a points to b and y b points to c and z c points to e and D. <clears throat> D points to nothing. E points to nothing, right? Because we updated that. S points to E. Uh, y points to nothing. Z points to S. Cool. So how can we, mm, do, you know, design an algorithm to know that S points to E? Okay, so one way is, well, let's think about this. So let's say we start from an arbitrary node, or let's say we start from the root node in this case. Let's say in this list, we're, we're granted that, okay, let's start with A. So if we do start with A, let's try a different color. Actually, it doesn't matter. So we'll start with A, right? Well, this will be our root node. And then we want to see if S... Um, reaches E. So one possible naive way is to think of, okay, let's have a, um, a, a variable says reachable. And this could be set to false initially. And we could do, um, we could do a, a breath first, you know, a BFS traversal or, or DFS. But let's say we did DFS, right? So we're going to go to A, we see its neighbors, so we're going to iterate through it, each of its neighbors, B and Y, 
and then we're just gonna um ba -ba -ba -ba. yeah we're just gonna go through each of them I, I suppose we could do this recursively so let's say we do b right so we go through b okay and now i mean if we were to sort of write the stack also this could be interesting let's say we have a stack here we start with a right um and then we have its neighbors um y and b let's say y first and b so basically we pop this off and then we're going to um its neighbors but okay even if let's say you go here and you know you, z c how do you know that s reaches e oh well this is actually um trickier than i thought well i mean you would need to check this part ultimately wouldn't you if this node doesn't visit that node then we know there isn't a route between those two nodes because it's directed so um, in a way why can't we just <laughs> with that said why don't we just start from s right we know what node we want to check from right so we could start from s and then basically just do a traversal and then if we hit e then this would become true right so um that's pretty much it really so you're gonna direct the graph in two nodes but then there's more to this right so i'm just gonna move that um so we're gonna say say um let's say this equals graph okay and now I want to, I want S. So let's say, um, start equals, um, graph. I wonder if I would be able to query which, uh, which route, which node I want to start with. I would be able to, because these are keys, right? So I want to say this is a start or somehow designate the start and then from start i i want to do a dfs so basically i'm going to have like um i'm going to have check route function given uh the graph right and i mean this is where i'll check the start and then i would then um basically create a dfs from here and we're going to take in start, right? So we're going to call our uh, function here, dfs, and we'll say start. Um, and so this is this is where we're going to design the function. And pretty much we're going to say, okay, um, this is all directed, so we don't have to worry so much about infinite loops and whatnot. So in this case, right, we can go to start we're doing a dfs and we're saying okay um f we have our variable right so uh, in here too we can have a variable as i said before something set to false to say that it's not reachable yet so i, I said variable but this should be reachable um so reachable is initially set to false and we're going to say for uh well, base case, if start is none, then we're going to return, okay? But otherwise, if it's not, then we're going to just say for neighbors of start, we're going to say, um, you know, and actually in this part, I would put like the... Um, the destination so we have a source and a destination here right so i'll put um sorry destination this part and then basically for with the graph we're gonna check destination if uh if neighbor 
equals destination. Wow. Okay. Um, then we're going to say, well, variable is reachable, right? Let's call it variable. Variable equals true. And then basically we could return. Well, um, well, that's that. So we could return variable. Look at my chicken scratch. Um, but yeah, I think the general idea is that we're going to set find the source and then do a DFS from there and basically, oh, wait, I missed one part. So if, if the, you know, neighbor, if the neighbor is, I, I should rewrite this really, but I really don't want to. So if neighbor is that true, right? If it's not though, then we're just going to call DFS, right? And we're going to say, okay, we're going to send neighbor. Okay. And that's it because we're going to go through each neighbor. Um, yeah. And this is starting from the source, which we provide, right? So start can be called source also. So the idea is that we pass in the source and then we look at all of its neighbors. And if there is a match, we're going to return a variable we're going to flip it and to say it's true. So, um, this, this was, uh, pretty shitty. So I'm just going to try to rewrite this better. Um, so we'll be nice about this. Given Given okay, given graph mm, search from source set a variable to false to 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 to, to represent reachability. Um, and then we are going to then um, visit all neighbors, check if neighbor or, uh, matches the destination. Because if there's a match, that means we have a route. Um, if match flip variable, meaning that variable we set, and then we'll return the variable. So we'll know. Um, and you know, we do have to do like a check. So I'll do assert. So granted that the graph is not null. Otherwise we're gonna say can't be null. Okay. Um, I mean, this seems pretty straightforward. So let's talk about the time complexity. I guess I should have talked about that while we go about it, right? But it really depends. Um, so I, I feel like it really depends on the number of edges, right? Edges between the, uh, the source and the destination. So uh, best case scenario, it could be one. Worst case scenario, we have to go through mm, maybe the length, the length of the graph, right? So I would probably get a max of this. So we'll go with length of graph. So big O of N. Mm, and in terms of space complexity, well, we don't really store anything. We already are given this graph. Uh, we don't store anything. We just traverse. But then again, we are using uh, recursive calls. So that means that, well, our stack is going to be relying on um, the, call, the calls. So in this worst case scenario, it can be big O of N, right? Um, the length of the graph. So this isn't so good. Um, best case scenario can be one, but we're going to care about the worst case scenario. Mm -hmm. Um, let's see. 
even if we use the BFS, we would still have a Q where, you know, the, the Q would have a list of all the nodes anyway, A, B, C, you know, in the worst case, let's say, let's say S could reach all of that. So Q could be, you know, big O of N2, the length of that. So um, is there a way where we don't have to sort of use the um, use the call stack? Well, there is. We could basically do a traversal iteratively. So we would start from S, right? And then we'll say for its neighbors, we, well, for each of its neighbors, we're going to, um, for each of its neighbors, we are going to go see and check. Oh, that's tough though, if you don't do it recursively. But anyway, um, I don't think it's impossible. So I would say yeah, iteratively, but recursive is most straightforward. Okay, um, I think that's that. So, um, screw it, maybe I'll talk about the next question. Um, so, it's a Friday, and this is what I'm doing for fun. Ooh. Okay. So the next question, let's use a different color. It's called minimal tree. Now a minimal tree, given a sorted increasing order array with unique integer elements, Write an algorithm to create a binary search tree with minimal height. Huh. All right, so we're given an increasing order. It's all sorted, right, with unique integer elements. So increasing order, right? So 9, 11, I'm going odd now, 12, 25, 2500. Okay, let's say that's our unique uh, array. We're gonna write an algorithm to create a binary search tree with minimal height. Now, minimal height. So, if we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I mean, if if I want to call um, the height, I'm gonna use height and depth um, interchangeably here. But I'm gonna say that this is gonna be zero. Granted that depth equals zero and this is gonna be two. We want to get the minimal height. Um, I wonder how you would reduce the height though. Because for this example, let's draw it out. I had to, of course, so three, we're going to start with three, three is our root, then we're going to go five, five greater than three in binary search tree. The property is that the right is always going to be greater than its uh, parent and left is always going to be less than its parent. So we're going to go seven and seven is going to be right there. Nine. Oh, I see. So we keep going. Ooh. You get the point. It just keeps going down and down and down. So the height gets really tall. Oh, okay. This is interesting. So because the height, I mean, the it's an increasing order, it's going to be skewed in one direction. But how can you create a binary search tree that doesn't, you know, adhere to that property? You know, I wouldn't put, I wouldn't put seven here. Mm. With minimal height, create a binary search tree with minimal height. How do I? I'm stumped. I don't know what to do with this one. If we have a th three, we can't put five on the left side, seven on the, 
that, that, that doesn't match. We'll have to start with three. Then we'll have to go five. Then we'll have to go seven. There's a binary search tree, so I can't give it multiple. Hmm. Unless I can. No, I can't. Binary search tree. Hmm. Oh, what the heck? So if you have three, you can't you can't do this. Twelve. I wouldn't be able to do that. What am I missing here? Mm. Oh gosh, I have no idea. I want to respect the property of a binary search tree, but I can't do it without breaking it. Um. Oh, what if we went backwards? What would happen then? Same thing, right? We would basically um, we would basically say 2,500. 25 is less than that 12. So we're going in the opposite direction now. Hmm. What if we started from the middle? Okay, let's say, how many is this? Four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, I keep doing that. Let's say we get the length of nums divided by two. Okay, this doesn't work right away. Divide by two is gonna be our starting point. So that'll be our root. Right, so what is this? Four, five, six, seven, eight divided by two is four. So zero, one, two, three, four. Eleven is gonna be our root. Let's say, okay, let's say eleven is our root. Then we could have two pointers. Pointer one, pointer two. And then I suppose we can have these two pointers going. So this would be index i, we'll start from i minus one and i plus one until i minus one reaches zero and i plus one reaches, you know, at the end of the length. So what happens then? Then we'll, okay, why don't we um, start at nine then? So nine is lesser than 11. Okay, then we can start, um, But then again, if you think about it, let's say, well, well 12 always gonna be greater than the, than the root, so I can't do that. So 12 here, boom, boom, it's gonna be looking at that, it's gonna be looking at that. Seven is less than nine. Uh, by the way, we probably, maybe we need to go one direction first before going the other, but just, for this, I'm just gonna say, okay, 25 um, pointer, I'm now looking at five. And then, you, you, I, well, the picture is coming out, and this would be three. So um, initially we had a height of length minus one, so that'd be four, five, six, seven, eight seven and now this is minimum height um one one two three so we get a minimum height um of three and this respects the binary search tree property of um that we don't have to you know go through um go through all of them so um, how do we implement this as an algorithm? First, 
we'll find the root first determine the root and then which is which is um which is half of the num divided by two um and then we are going to maybe create you know um set out we we have two um so we know the index right so we can say the lower we can use a slicing to determine the lower array so let's say let's say this array was called um tree okay so we'll start tree zero to um to i because it's inclusive i uh, sorry exclusive and then um we'll have so this will be the lower right and this will be the higher array so higher we're going to have i to um the length of tree right so we have two arrays now so we're going to loop through each tree and then basically do a binary search you know just basically we're going to have to write a, um, a function that does um you know that creates a binary search tree and um that's that's a whole different video but maybe we can work on that later um but yeah this is a very interesting one because it, it does and i i think by doing this by choosing the half point we reduce the minimal height by at least um n divided by two so um, before worst case of seven now this is um, three so it's like roughly um, you know four three point five um, so can we do any better than this um, wait sorry I mean this is the minimal height right so this is good in terms of height I suppose but in terms of building out this tree we're looking at um you know all these number of elements so we're looking at n minus one elements and then we're basically doing a um log operation for all of them so we're doing n minus one times log n so it's like n log n i believe so uh it's i mean that's good so is this the best conceivable running time? I'm not so sure. Um, I, I think it's much better than the naive approach that we first saw because we get something skewed. Um, but what's the space? What, what kind of space do we use here? Well, we're given an array. We don't really, um, no, we, we don't have, uh, space would be constant here. We're just breaking up the, um, the arrays here left and right and we're looping through them. So, um, but we're still going to n elements so um this is bigger than big o of n so i would say i'll say this um it would be interesting to write some code for this one but um i don't know that was my initial approach on it okay i'm done for tonight i'm tired um bye Thank you.